Hi, this is the Wednesday evening update on Hurricane Delta. As always, the thoughts here are just mine, and in making decisions, consult your local weather office, your local officials, and the National Hurricane Center for the best information for where you live. We have now seen Delta come across the Yucatan Peninsula, just north of Cozumel, south of Cancun, and now out over the central Gulf of Mexico, where it has now emerged. And a lot has happened in the last 24 hours. The last video we made, the storm was rapidly intensifying in the Northwest Caribbean. As it approached the Yucatan, what happened is some of the mid-level shear that we talked about out of the east managed to disrupt the inner core a bit and prevent additional strengthening. And in fact, some weakening occurred as the storm approached the Yucatan Peninsula, which was great news for this region. Despite the lashing they got last night, it could have been worse. The storm came ashore with winds somewhere between 100 and 115 miles per hour, and wind gusts above 100 were measured at the coastline. This then crossed the landmass, took a few hours to do so, and as expected, that disrupted the storm a little further, and the storm has now weakened to a state where it has winds of about 85 miles per hour at a maximum or category one equivalent. This is not entirely unexpected here as it crosses the landmass in this cooler patch of water to the north of the Yucatan, and now we're reaching the, the section of the storm's journey where it will now re-intensify over the Gulf of Mexico as it curves toward the north and then into Louisiana sometime on Friday. And we've been talking about this for some time, and this part of the forecast has been fairly consistent. Uh, the only change that we've really had over the last few days is a gradual nudge in the track uh, farther and farther west, now settling into western central Louisiana today as of the latest advisory from the National Hurricane Center. If we take a closer look at the state of the storm right now, it is moving very close to Scorpion Reef now with the center of rotation somewhere in there. Still no clear eye. And uh, this is expected as the storm comes off of land. And typically what happens is a tropical cyclone needs at least half a day or even a full day in some cases for the boundary layer to recover. And by that, I mean the circulation now has to pick up new heat and moisture off the ocean and re-moisten the lowest level of the atmosphere before thunderstorm activity can become vigorous enough to cause the storm to intensify significantly again over the water. So... As it's coming off of the coast, we've seen recon observations. Uh, the plane went in there right when it came off. Pressure was about 980. We have already seen it start to fall gradually again. So we're already seeing perhaps the first signs of Delta beginning to regain strength over the water. But this process is usually a little bit slow at first. And then after the first half day or full day, that can pick up and become quicker intensification if conditions are favorable. Again, the plane is currently finding maximum winds on mostly the north side near 85 miles per hour right now. And importantly, the storm structure is beginning to change as well. Instead of having a tiny pinhole eye five miles wide, we now have a broader area or a broader radius of maximum wind. And so this region of hurricane force wind is encompassing a slightly larger circle, but the storm in context is still not that large. This is a regular sized hurricane. It's not this big yet. The area of strong wind is still relatively compact. What this means is that the storm is unlikely to upwell a lot of cold water ahead of itself during this first part of its journey. And while it's over this part of the Gulf of Mexico, it could reattain a major hurricane status, that is a category three or higher with winds of 115 or higher. And we're likely to see some healthy intensification overnight tonight and tomorrow while it's passing over this region of pretty warm and deep water out in the west central gulf. Things that uh, need to be noted as it's going through that part of its journey. This is the current satellite observed uh, convective structure of the storm showing that the eye is in here and you can kind of make out this ring of cyan or teal indicating the inner eye wall, we do have a couple of hints that there might be other bands that are slightly larger than this that could, in theory, promote the development of secondary eye walls or concentric rings of thunderstorms as the storm moves off toward the west. These are typically hard to predict, but it's something we'll watch for, and this basically determines two different possible outcomes for Delta's intensity over the Gulf. One is that uh, the inner ring of thunderstorms becomes dominant. We have a nice compact inner eye wall and that inner core intensifies and we get a strengthening category three or four hurricane out here with winds between 115 and 130. 
Option two is that for whatever reason, this inner ring struggles to become dominant again, and we get one of these outer bands starting to try to wrap around and start to, for lack of a better word, compete with the inner eye wall. And hurricanes with that structure tend to have a broader wind field at the expense of lower maximum wind. And in that case, if that happens, the storm might have slightly lower maximum wind, perhaps more in the 100 to 115 range instead of the 115 to 130 range. So we'll see how that evolves over the next couple of days. But either way, the message is that we're expecting it to become a major hurricane again. And then once it becomes uh, very strong right about here it's going to be moving up into Louisiana and again the shelf water is cooler here at this time of year so as it moves up into Louisiana we are expecting weakening to ensue prior to landfall so say it gets up to winds of 130 here it might be down to 100 or 115 by the time of landfall important to note that just because you'll hear the word weakening or winds decrease or whatever the terminology is on television or wherever, uh, the storm's wind field will still be dangerous here as it will be getting more expansive as the storm moves toward Louisiana and a large region is likely to experience dangerous wind. And in addition, if the storm is strong here, say a Cat 3 or 4, even if it weakens to a Cat 2 at Louisiana, all that ocean water being built up and pushed around down here while it's a 3 or 4 is still going to be around uh, when it moves ashore, even if the wind has come down. So the ocean threat could still be large here with the storm surge that could be quite substantial, even if the wind is decreasing. If you look at the GFS forecast here for the steering, this is the 500 millibar pattern, and we have very consistent ideas about uh, how this is moving now. Once again, we have the, the storm off the Yucatan and this ridge in the mid-levels currently centered over Florida rotating clockwise. This is helping to direct the storm toward the west-northwest and eventually northwest as it turns around the edge of this ridge. We have this trough over Texas, which is also helping to impart a southwesterly flow here. And these two features together are funneling the hurricane toward Louisiana in between the two. We have high confidence in this track. Now, of course, little wobbles left and right of that, plus or minus 50 miles, something like that, means that we're never going to be entirely sure exactly what point the eye moves ashore. But models are very consistent now with all the data we have. We have uh, even a jet flying around gathering data ahead of the storm in the uh, Gulf of Mexico. All that data is giving high confidence, and computer models have really narrowed down the landfall point here to somewhere between between Lake Charles and Lafayette, Louisiana, with Lake Charles being about here, Lafayette being about here. And it's really this section of coastline that models are pretty confident this is coming in at. We have no reason to doubt that. This is a very standard kind of track around the ridge with a trough over Texas. Again, some wobbling here, but keep in mind the circulation will be large. So widespread impacts, regardless of exactly which spot the eye comes ashore. Another look at the upper level wind here from the GFS, now up at 250 millibars higher up, shows that as this approaches the coast, again, because of that trough over Texas, southwesterly flow at the top of the storm increases, so wind shear is likely to increase to 20 to 30 knots in the final 6 to 12 hours before landfall. Again, in combination with the cold water, means we're expecting the maximum winds to be in the process of decreasing as the storm comes ashore, but winds greater than 100 miles per hour remain forecast and so this will remain a significant wind threat along with storm surge and flash flooding. This is the official forecast from NHC showing the forecast cone here through day three. And again, it has nudged west since yesterday. It may not nudge may not nudge that much more uh, given the confidence, confidence that we're seeing in a lot of the model guidance today and all of the abundance of observational data we have. But keep an eye out for changes. You can see here that there is still a cone of uncertainty that shows you the reasonable distance that this could wobble left or right and the range of landfall locations that could occur. So if you're in eastern Texas here on this forecast, we continue to say that it's still possible the track could nudge as far west as perhaps the state border here. If you're sitting in Houston, northwest of Galveston Bay, you're looking pretty good on this forecast. Keep in mind that when these hurricanes start accelerating toward the north or northeast at 15 to 20 miles an hour, 
the eastern side of the wind field is more expansive and stronger than the western side and you also get less storm surge on the western side because the wind is offshore you don't get no surge but you get less and if you're in Houston here on the back side of this, if, even if it comes in at the state border, you'll be okay. If you're in Port Arthur or Beaumont, if the eye is near the state border, then the eye wall could still impact part portions of far southeastern Texas. So you have to be prepared for that eventuality. That would be the worst case scenario for people in those locations. If you're, if you're in Louisiana, anywhere from Lake Charles to Vermilion Bay and the vicinity of Lafayette could see a direct hit from the eye wall here, and the maximum wind hazard is something that you all should be preparing for. There is a hurricane watch all the way over to the Mississippi River. As again, if the hurricane moves along the right-hand side of this cone, the wind field on the right is more expansive, and so there's the possibility of hurricane conditions as far east as there. And if you're in New Orleans, keep in mind that the storm will be turning toward the east as it's making that landfall. So especially if it's on the right-hand half of this cone and it's turning toward the right, it could be moving inland over southeast Louisiana and so southwest Mississippi close enough to bring significant weather to the New Orleans area. So although hurricane force winds don't seem very likely here on the current forecast, tropical storm force winds of a 40 miles per hour are certainly possible. And uh, keep in mind everyone that the cone now shrinks and becomes very thin as we get to shorter and shorter forecast times. And this does not show you the zone where hazardous wind could occur. The actual wind field above 40 miles per hour is shown here in orange and that is expected to enlarge. And by the time of landfall, this circle will have grown bigger. The NHC has a nice product to show you this and what your chances of receiving winds that are dangerous above tropical storm force, 39 miles per hour or higher. I usually say 40 and everything in yellow here on this forecast is a 30% or larger chance of receiving winds of 40 miles per hour or greater. So you can see that that is now larger than the forecast cone and that's the zone that should be expecting the possibility of dangerous wind. Also though, at the coastline beyond wind here, the most dangerous and life-threatening impact will be from storm surge, as many of you in Louisiana know too well. Very storm surge prone area and water level rises that could be greater than 10 feet in some places, especially near Vermilion Bay, on the current forecast are possible. And if you're in an evacuation zone and your local officials tell you to leave, well, that's because they're expecting your location to have water rises that inundate your location. So you should probably go if you get that order. And this could occur even southwest of Galveston Bay because, you know, these winds that come offshore can cause flooding on the barrier islands or on the backside of Galveston Bay. You can still get storm surge on the west side, even if there's no rain and not that much wind at your location. You can still get surge. Waves will also be propagating toward the shore away from the storm. And then near the point of landfall and well to the east of that point of landfall, we're getting all this southerly wind pushing water on shore. So we could have water rises that are dangerous as far east as Mobile bay on the current forecast again the exact numbers and levels here will potentially get adjusted as the storm gets closer but it's clear that a life-threatening storm surge flooding event is on the way as this comes ashore and of course we'll also be worried about inland rainfall this is not a slow moving hurricane like sally so it's not going to cause tremendous amounts of rain but still like with any hurricane you could see several inches and isolated amounts even higher than that if a rain band moves over the same location for many hours at a time. That's something that's hard to predict and local amounts over 10 inches uh, could cause significant flash flooding in areas that are vulnerable to that. So keep an eye on the National Weather Service in your local area. You can always follow them on social media to get local info at weather.gov slash social media to follow their updates for your location as I'm just here to give you the big picture. I can't really drill down to the city level. That's not my job. But anyway, everyone, please stay safe here. This is the current forecast. I'll leave you with that. I'll have another update tomorrow. Stay safe and be prepared. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.